Hi, welcome back to this video series on code contracts verification using .NET code contracts library. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about a problem that is given here on the Microsoft um, code contract demo website, riseforfun.com. So I'll be taking the resize program, which is uh, array utility kind of program. You can add elements to an array. Uh, however, the array uh, can also dynamically grow in the size, okay? Um, so you, you can imagine like an elastic array, okay? Um, we have been using preconditions, post conditions in my other demos. Uh, today, um, I'm going to talk about a new construction uh, called uh, object invariant checker, right? If you decorate your uh, class name um, and put um, a contract invariant method as part of the uh, annotation, what the verification tool will do is it will verify that um, the program satisfies the state variables uh, constraints automatically. When a, uh, whenever a public method is called, at the end of the public method, it will check whether the state of the object is preserved. So I'll talk more about it after explaining the, the code that you're seeing. Okay, so um, the code that we are going to look into is basically, as I said earlier, a simple integer array program, right? It has um, two uh, state variables count and elements. Count is basically used to count how many elements are in your array so far, and the elements is the array itself. Okay. And as you can see here, you would be instantiating your resize uh, demo object using this constructor, passing in the size of the array you would like to have initially. And that's basically these two lines, right? Count is initially set to zero. All right, so now if you want to add an element, um, you will be calling add add and pass the value that you want to add. Um, the program checks whether the count is equal to elements.length, that means, uh, there's no room essentially right if count is um say let, let's take a simple example let's take uh, let's take this state okay let's assume our elements array has three elements right count will be three and the element start length will, will also be three right even though the index starts with zero so this is the zeroth index this is one and this is two um the count is three in this case uh, after I fill in say A, B, C, or oh, this case number, right? So I, let me fill in, um, and let me fill in zero, three, five. And now if I wanted to say add a four to it, uh, there's no room because count is same as the uh, length of the array. So in that case, what the program does is, as you can see here, it doubles the um, current count and create a new array. So it's basically creating an array of uh, six elements, right? Because count is three. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have six elements and then it copies the content from here to here, right? So it's going to be zero, three, five, because it's, we are saying here how many elements to copy, right? Here we are saying how many elements to copy. And let's say now you want to append the next element, which will be say four, for example, and four will be added because of this statement. And count is also incremental in the process. The count has become now four. So four elements are filled. Now we can happily go ahead and fill the next element and next element. Now the count is six. And if you wanted to add another element, um, line number 20 shows that a new array has to be created of 12 element size and then the same process repeats. Okay. Okay, so this is how the array add function behaves. Looks reasonably correct, right? There isn't anything necessarily coming out um, at this point. So let's look at the um, tool and verify it uh, and see what kind of warnings it will come up with for this particular code, right? So let's, let's do that. So the tool came up with some warnings, as you can see, uh, length of the array can be negative because uh, we are taking the user input and instantiating it at line number 31. So the tool also mentioned that we need to add a contract because it makes no sense to have a negative array for a, an array. Um, so we should add a contract as per the tool's suggestion uh, requires that in C-sharp, the length of an array can be zero. So we put 
uh, size of the array can be zero. So we put zero less than or equal to size zero. Let's see whether the that particular warning disappears at least. Okay, that's good. There are no squillies here. That means we, we got through that warning, but still we are getting new warnings. Oh, there is an integer buffer overflow problem, right? Um, integer overflow problem. Line number 20, hmm, why is that? It shows that we are multiplying the count by two. That means we have two numbers, right? Count and two. Count is an integer. We start with zero, but we keep incrementing it. Um, and at some point we are multiplying count by two. So when you multiply two positive numbers, it can be the case that the answer is a negative number due to the way computer arithmetic works. And I talked about integer security in other videos. So I will not uh, repeat that process again, but uh, you will see that uh, count can count times two can be negative. Okay, so what shall we do? Uh, we put a constraint, okay? Let's, let's say the, uh, the scenario will be like this, right? Um, let me draw a box for you and explain what happens. So uh, say you have a number X, which tended to be, or, or, or take the count, count is what we are dealing with. What happens if the, um, this is the uh, 31st position in the index, right? This is 30th and this is zero. Okay, so this is a 32 bit number. What happens if this bit is on and everything else is zero for a moment, okay? In terms of binary. So what is the value of this expression? There's nothing but two power 30. And now if you multiply this by two, you get two power 31, which means this bit will become turned on suddenly, right? Which is a negative number because the most significant bit decides whether a number is positive or negative in two's complement representation. So therefore, we don't want to multiply by two if the count is greater than or equal to two for 30. So let's put a constraint on that uh, in the implementation. Okay, so let me go back here and fix that problem now. We say in our dynamic elastic array, we will not allow all possible array size, of course, because we are working with finite size uh, of arrays. So if count uh, is greater than or equal to two power 30, what is two power 30? Two power 30 is nothing but taking the, the number one and moving it to 30 positions to the left in um, using the binary um, or bitwise left shift operator. So that's what it means, two power 30. If this is true, we say we, we return, meaning we don't do anything, right? Let's see whether this uh, fix uh, the problem related to integer multiplication. Hopefully that problem goes away. Let's see whether the verifier can convince. That's good, that particular problem disappeared. So we are on track here, right? So this, I will just make a comment here. Um, you can even actually create a, 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 a private um, integer, uh, two power 30, right? Nothing but mm, to make your 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 uh, code more readable if you want. Okay, so now we can hopefully go back here and replace it by two power 30. So let's run this and see whether that particular warning disappears, okay? All right, it's still verifying that the spinning here. Array access might be caused by the upper bond. Hmm. I think there's something um, fishy with respect to this kind of uh, substitution maybe I will just leave it like this yeah, I should just I will just leave it like this for the purpose of this demo um, seems that kind of substitution doesn't really work uh, or I have to do more analysis but anyway um, so this this should be good let's try it okay so we got that particular part done and this next problem we, we saw a warning for this particular line 25, how do we get that problem away? That's a tricky one. I spent a fair amount of time thinking about it. Um, remember, our count can be zero. So after some analysis, what I did actually was, I added assert statements to check everywhere, whether um, something like this, right? I said condition dot uh, assert count um, is uh, never equal to uh, this dot elements dot length, right? If if the, if if count is um, in a equal to 
this dot elements dot length, we are in trouble because that, that means we are crossing the limits of the array index, right? We should not be. So let's see what happens if I do that. I hope it's going to show, yeah. You see here, there's a warning at line number 25 because assert unproven. So it's not able to prove this. That means there's a possibility that the count can be equal to this dot length, elements dot length, which is bad. That means we are going to cross the limits. So um, I was scratching my head and I thought, when can that happen? Um, I, I decided to move this inside. Right? It was not that trivial, as you can see, the tool says that I cannot prove, but it doesn't tell you exactly uh, a counter example. So you need to sort of uh, work your way through and I'm just explaining what I did. I, I actually thought, what, what happens here? You go inside, can you ever get into the scenario where the count is not equal to the start elements start length? Remember here at line number 24, we already doubled the size of the array, right? And let's see what happens. Okay, it still shows warning at line number 24 and it says unproven. Okay, now I, I spent more time trying to figure out what could have been the reason. It seems that the, the natural place to look at it is that are we creating a new elements array, uh, which is different size than the original array size, right? That's what I wanted to check. So what is the new size array? The new size array is nothing but count times two. Okay, and um, it struck me that what happens if count is zero? Say, say you're creating an array of size um, zero initially because you remember our our uh, resize demo allows size to be zero, which is perfectly fine array size in the C sharp world. Which means that count is zero, and this dot element start length is also zero. 0 equal to 0 is true, so it's going to come here. And of course, line number 20 is false, so it's going to come to line number 21. It's going to create an array of size 0, because count times 2, count being 0 means your new array is also size 0, which, which is wrong, because we want to be able to insert an element when, when your initial array is empty. Okay, Therefore, it struck me that I have to fix this line, line number 21 with something more meaningful, okay? Which checks whether the count is zero or not. So what I came up with is, I created a variable called size, right? I check whether count is zero. If count is zero, what am I supposed to do? I say I will create the new size array to be one. You just add only one element. Otherwise, I keep two times count, or count times two, to be consistent with what I wrote. Okay. so. Remember, we already fixed the multiplication buffer overflow or integer overflow problem because count times two is already um, guaranteed to be greater than or equal to zero because of line number 20. And now I can um, use this new size, right? Let me explain what's happening here. I check whether count is zero. If count is zero, that means my current content is zero. Uh, um, um, the, the array itself is empty. Uh, remember, line number 19 says count is equal to this dot elements dot length. That means my array is also empty. So I say I want an array of size one. That's the reason I pick here. Otherwise, I go and pick two times count. So this is basically a shortcut of if then else statement. Okay. And now I have the line number 22. Um, so let's see whether this disappears. Uh, this removes the problem at line number 26 where we got the problem originally. Okay. Now it's good news. It says validated 100%. So assuming the tool works correctly, uh, we can be sure that there are no um, integer related problems, uh, no buffer overflow or something like that in this, in this uh, code. Um, we are not really checking whether our ad is doing its job. That would require us to specify the, uh, the contract, like the contract that ensures and things like that, which we are not doing at this point. Um, I'm just going to show you uh, the invariant object, okay? And one more thing I learned in this process is um, worth talking about. Earlier, I actually didn't write this line number 21 as it is. I wrote something like this, actually. I wrote uh, var size is equal to uh, math dot max of uh, um, uh, two times count, right, or count times two, or one, okay. So 
I think they are conceptually same, line number 21 and 22 are conceptually same, because let's say count is zero. In, the, in that case, count times two is also zero. So zero comma one, the maximum will be one, which is exactly what line number 21 says. If count is non-zero, uh, clearly uh, count times two will be the maximum because we have already checked that uh, it's, it's, it's greater than or equal to zero. Um, uh, and, it, and it's an integer, therefore it must be the max, uh, maximum value. For some reason, when I tried this, it was not very fine, okay? Unless I have overlooked something, I think um, the reason why it was not working is that math.max is a library code, which was not necessarily um, analyzed using the code contract library, as opposed to the array.copy, which was also a library code, but happened to be already taken care of by the uh, .NET um, code contract uh, system. So that's what I'm thinking. I, I have not really analyzed what is the difference between line number 21 and 22 other than that. But it's it's quite uh, interesting for me that I'm not able to prove that uh, um, array bound is um, within the range. So I had to revert it to line number 21. And I encourage you to try and let me know if um, 22 and 21 are different. So anyway, so I go here now, I create a variable. Suppose you have a legacy code and that was written using a math.max, then it's a problem. If, uh, if math.max is not part of code contract analysis framework. Um, so when you're designing new, then you can create uh, your own max function and, and call the real math.max uh, or your some kind of a lightweight max for verification purpose. So it's sort of designed for verification kind of thinking is needed when you verify these things mechanically uh, in general. Okay, so uh, having said all of this, now let's get back to the invariance, right? What is the purpose of the invariance that uh, mentioned here? The invariance help us to make sure that our object state is in good state, okay? Um, for example, we want to make sure that our count is, is, is always greater than or equal to zero. It makes sense because count tells us how many elements are in our array, can never be negative. Uh, we also wanted um, that uh, the, the count is maximum uh, length of the array. We don't want it to go above the length of the array nor below the value zero. That's basically what line number 11 and 12 are, are saying, okay? So if you make a mistake, let's say I'm going to make a mistake here, okay? Deliberately making a mistake. Let's first run this thing to make sure our program is free of errors and then make a mistake, okay? Say I put the count to be, um, let me put a mistake here. Okay, what kind of mistake? Um, say my count is set to minus one for some reason, okay? Hopefully the invariant checker will tell us that we are wrong. Yep, it said the invariant is false. You see here, this dot count has to be greater than or equal to zero. So it checks for all the public methods at the last line, um, the state of the object is matching the state constraints that were mentioned earlier, okay? That's, that's good. So, um, these things are mistakes people make all the time, right? We, we mess with all these indexes and then create problems in the process. Okay, let me make, um, uh, well, that, that's good enough at this point. So um, this is the whole purpose of the demo is to show you what is, what is object invariant. You just write a method and tag it with this uh, attribute, annotate it with this attribute contract invariant method. It automatically gets called and checked for you the for the object state okay so to wrap up i will just finish it up without warnings yep it has verified all the elements of the code and said we are good to go okay and that's all um, thank you very much for your attention